it going guys? My name is Keaton and I'm just here to introduce you to the Fork in the Road. So this is a podcast that me and my friend Kale started. We're going to be spearheading the project, but his twin brother Evan is going to be around to break things down for us occasionally. They're going to introduce themselves later in the episode. I just wanted to go over our mission statement before you guys started listening to the intro episode. So we're here to convey a message of compassion and community that's facilitated through discussions of philosophy and ethics. We value the truth above all, and the goals are to spread ideas that foster right mind and right society, as well as promote a lifestyle of nonviolence. So I hope you guys enjoy this first episode, and I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say about our conversation. See you later. We're coming to you from Camrose. This is my guy, Kale. Kale, let's say what's up. What's going on, everybody? And then we've got Evan on the FaceTime over here. He's joining us from Kelowna. Say what's up. Hey, guys. Um, so we're going to be talking to you about a bunch of things over the course of however many episodes. But basically, we're just starting off with an introduction and help you guys get to know us and introduce you to the topics of the show in general. My name's Keaton. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Calgary, Alberta. I'm currently at Augustana in Camero studying a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Education with hopes of becoming a high school teacher one day. Um, when it comes to me outside of school, uh, we are basketball players, that's where we came from. Um, like to stay active, we like to contribute to our communities. Um, I do as much volunteering as I can. I've worked at the zoo in Calgary. I really enjoy just social activities, keeping myself busy. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, me and Evan are obviously both from Calgary. Um, I'm on the basketball team here with Keaton. I'm studying Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Um, I'm really going to try to bring that kind of knowledge to the podcast if I can, really try to explore some nice psychological concepts and stuff. So I'm really excited to do that. Nice, yeah. Um, so I'm Evan, um, relate to these guys, I'm Kale's brother. Um, so yeah, I'm 20 years old. I'm studying engineering at University of British Columbia in Kelowna. Um, I, my main interest outside of school, probably like Buddhism, um, like psychedelics, all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so probably going to be mostly talking about that. For this first episode, we're just going to be introducing you to uh, what we're going to be talking about as a whole. So we just wanted to start off talking about what we wanted to get out of this podcast. Like, what did I individually want to do to start this podcast? So in my opinion, the truth is something that everybody is entitled to. It's the, something that everybody is searching for um, at all times. And through conversation, books, and other media, we are absorbing each other's opinions. We are um, being introduced to other facts, to other ways of thinking. And I feel like that conversation, that uh, having the conversation between two people, is how we develop further ideas on uh, topics that we're studying right now. Yeah, so. I think that's a that's a good point. Like conversation is key obviously that's why we're like doing the podcast format I exactly think it's like you can learn a lot just by talking to people so that's really like i think what's inspired us all to do it is just from talking with each other and realizing that we can learn a lot just by mashing our heads together i guess yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i was thinking the same thing that like um honestly mostly this just helped me sort out my my thoughts and my ideas would just kind of bring it all together and mm-hmm. Honestly, if we could help someone do the same and facilitate a bit of conversation, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's always nice to bounce your ideas off someone. Yeah. Figure out if your like, ideas make sense because there's a confirmation bias. You always think you're right. And like, this may be a platform for us, uh, the podcast to you guys who are listening, but at the end of the day, it is a conversation. So it's like, it doesn't matter if your views are agreeing or disagreeing with our views. It's like, as long as we can have a productive conversation that pushes us closer towards the truth, whatever that is in my sense or your sense, then that's what we're looking for. 
Yeah, I feel like like as long as you're coming from like a place of like compassion and, and uh, like good intentions, then then you can always have a, a like, civil discussion. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. Honesty, yeah. honesty yeah. for sure. Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people are like nowadays with like the polarization that we're seeing, seeing. Um, people just want to be right, you know. And I mean, I don't like want to think that I'm any better at that. Like, I mean, I need to like try to be open too. But a lot of people just want to prove themselves right, and not right. Be open. Yeah. It seems like the climate of just our society is right now. It's not a discussion as to here's my outlook, there's your outlook. Let's have a conversation. It's more okay, I understand where you're coming from, but, like, I genuinely believe you're not wrong, so I don't really... Or you're not right, so I don't really want to hear what you have to say. And I feel like that's just counterintuitive to just humans in general, because, like, at the end of the day, they they say a bunch of hands are more than a few, you know? What did she say? I don't know what I'm looking for there, but... That's what I'm trying That's to get right. at. So, At the end of the day, the if we're all yeah. working together, we're going to get more done than yeah. if I was trying to do things on my own. So I feel like it's the same way with knowledge. It's like, I'm willing to hear you out as long as you're willing to hear me out. Mm. Actually, yeah. I, 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 you go. I think we'll, uh, yeah, I think we'll get into this more like in later episodes, but like a big thing is like, like the individ like individuality. Like if you're thinking of someone as an individual, then you can listen to them and have a have a discussion with them, like as like a human to another human. Yeah, right. You're not just kind of talking at that like ideas level, like two ideas clashing. Yeah. Is that what you yeah. mean? Well, I, I I understand what you're coming, or at least I think I understand where you're coming from. There, it's just like you're respecting who I am. I'm respecting who you are, and like the idea that we're not. Uh, trying to bash one another, you know. Yeah. But um, when it comes to some other things that I just want out of this, I think it's really important that I'm helping myself through my own thoughts. Mm. Um, you know, like at the end of the day, not everybody has a way to put their voice out there in the world, and it's like I don't really know what the truth is. I don't really know what the truth I'm searching for is but I know I am searching for knowledge and I know that being able to talk to as many people as I can will be a way to do that, legitimizing other people's ideas. So it doesn't matter your skin color, it doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter your sexual orientation. As long as you're respecting my ideas, then I'm respecting your ideas. No doubt. So I feel like just like, one thing I feel like is like the pursuit of the truth for the sake like of itself might be um, kind of a not the best task, but I mean, like, really, our, our main goal is like um, to develop like a personal philosophy, like so you can get through the like, like really apply it, and I think we'll try and like keep it real real practical at all times. Yeah, and try and stay as much like as much as we can away from like that just abstract ideas. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think we need to like bring a lot of practice practicality at least that's what i'm looking to do and like make a real difference in people's lives you know like, yeah i think ideas are kind of the worst list like you only have so much time you gotta like talk about stuff that's gonna help you out you know exactly uh yeah. real-time solutions to real-time problems yeah evan why do you think yeah. it's important to have a personal philosophy um i mean generally like you just if you like mostly when you like hit hard times in life, which no doubt everyone will face, no uh, doubt. if not like during their life, like at the time of death, you're you can't just go through. Like if if you hit a hard time with no strong foundation, you'll just it'll just crush you. Mm -hmm. No doubt, yeah. You won't be able to recover from that. Um, oh yeah, but this what we were talking about about the like practicality. It just reminded me of this like this Buddhist teaching, um, like the parable of the poison arrow. That like um, so this guy gets shot by a poisoned arrow, okay. and the surgeon rushes to treat him. And before he lets the surgeon treat him, he asks like, "Oh, who shot the arrow? How tall was he? What was the arrow made out of? All this stuff that's irrelevant." Hmm. Um, but just I just thought that was like a really good way of putting like we just 
just focus on dealing with what is the issue. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. I like that. <laughs> I agree with you. That's cool. Yeah. Who shot the poison arrow? Um. I think another thing when it comes to the importance of the personal philosophy, uh, without it, what are you going to base your moral judgments on? Like at the end of the day, For sure. everybody needs to have that line that you're either willing to cross or you're not willing to cross. Um, so I think it's just a good way to keep yourself in check um, when it comes to your everyday actions, but also your thoughts and the influences that you put out into the world. Yeah, I think that's a good point. It's, it's like, do you really have any morals if you don't know what they are? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And like, like also that kind of same thing, like, you don't know what you like value until it like comes into a conflict with something else and if you haven't actually decided what you what you value you might like make the wrong decision mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i mean i guess that boy the next question would be like how do you isolate what do you value you know um other people may value if we're talking in terms of the truth, they may value a scientific truth over a religious truth. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the important things is that we're here to recognize all truths. You know what I'm saying? It's like, as long as, um, well, okay, let me rewind. We're here to recognize all truths, but it's like nobody ultimately knows what the truth is, you know? Yeah, I think that's kind of the point of like what we're trying to do, right? It's like we're valuing the truth above everything else, mm -hmm. which I mean, it's like a really old idea, like all the way like from Christianity and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's like one of those things that you can't really reason your way into. Yeah. It's, like, it's just kind of self-evident. I wouldn't even say like self-evident, like more like faith, where I, I don't know, I kind of hesitate to say faith-based, but like an axiom that like you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So, like, I feel like the truth is a good place to, to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially, like, it'd be hard to think of a better one, so. Yeah. yeah. So, when it comes to the personal philosophy, we wanted to talk about some real-world issues that we're seeing. Some reasons why we feel the need that uh, to acknowledge the fact that everybody should have a personal philosophy. But not only that, like to acknowledge the fact that we are coming forward to voice that and the our, our own opinions about it because it's so important. Um, right now, especially with everything that's going on in 2020, 2021 with the coronavirus, the pandemic, everybody seems pretty hopeless. Um, a lot of people are having troubles when it comes to the economy, when it comes to familial troubles being trapped in situations that they literally can't get out of because they're not allowed to travel. So um, a really big thing that we want to focus on is combating nihilism and these tendencies to think that life is hopeless and there's nothing out there for us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Evan, you want to talk about that? Yeah, I really feel like um, that is like coming from like a, a distancing from like religion, especially a religious ideas. Yeah. That like people just since there's no more like um, religion in most of the culture, that just seems like there's no meaning, and I don't think that's necessarily true. Right. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like the move like away from religion, like into atheism and like or like hyper rationality type thinking has definitely like seen an increase in like hopelessness. I think. Yeah, I would say, especially because in the times where the Bible was seen to be the word of God and like people were literally being um, taken from their families and they were being imprisoned for life, they were being put to death for disobeying the word of God, at least you had something to rely on because that was the truth. Ultimately, if I'm abiding by the word of God, then I'm living life correctly. And right. It's like moving away from that. It's like, how do we know if we're living the right life? It's like, yeah, without that... Like like people before maybe like life was shitty mm -hmm. but at least they had god but yeah. now our like material needs are met for the most part but exactly like there's that emptiness that people are feeling I yeah think. like just the same thing once like once you get into hard times like like 
like I said before, just that if you don't have anything to lean on, it's gonna go horribly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really easy to start descending once you like get down there it's even harder to get out yeah so do you think in this culture since we are like like you said kale like we're materialistically sufficient the fact that we have access to all of this information what do you think is limiting people from seeing this spirituality this religious truth this side of things do you think it was just a cultural shift um, like away from believing that God's word is the truth or do you think there was some other influences towards that? Uh, yeah, just like it, um, I feel like it really comes out of like the the hyper, hyper rational like scientific way of thinking which obviously has had its benefits in our like uh, material world um, but like I, this was kind of Nietzsche's idea that like, like Christianity kind of killed itself Mm-hmm. That, like the, the stress on the truth um, like killed God basically right they kind of confined it too much is that what you mean right yeah like they were like we're the only ones that have the truth and then they kind of blew it all up for everybody by trying too hard yeah exactly yeah okay so if we're coming from the perspective of combating nihilism what's our first our first move when it comes to advising people it's like especially in times like this because what what's getting you through the day what are you looking forward to outside of our materialistic things that you know is helping you right now in our situation um yeah i mean like specifically like a, a meditation practice really really important to me um yeah just like ha- having that and like realizing that I mean, one of, the, one of the main things is that negative emotions aren't, aren't permanent at all. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I would say that's kind of more the specific, like, real, like, practical level. Um, but also just, like, in a wider, like, more philosophical way that, um, that like, life isn't horrible. Like, mm-hmm. that's just kind of how people choose to view it. Yeah, you have a choice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Um, I mean, for me, it's, I mean, it's hard for sure, obviously, as it is for everybody, but, you know, I just try to put my faith in God, or, like, Mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, like, reality is kind of out of your hands, right, so it really only comes down to realizing that, yeah, for me, like, I really notice when I try to control things, that's when it starts to get bad, and Mm -hmm. once I kind of, like, relinquish control, it's a lot easier, easier. yeah, because you don't have control in the first place, yeah, well, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, Kale and I are in a really special situation because we leave, live in a house with three of our very good friends. So it's not like that social aspect has been robbed for us. But I think outside of that, for the people who are going through things like that, for me, it's really helpful to be able to read other people's thoughts and to have the freedom to comment on them. I keep a journal, that's where I keep most of my comments. I I try and keep commenting on personal things online to a minimum, but when it comes to collecting my thoughts, I keep them in a journal. But with social media being so big right now, I know a lot of people do use social media as a form to interact, as a form to express their opinions and to throw their truth out there into the world. So I'm just, I'm wondering, do you think everybody is getting that equal opportunity are people's truths being shown um equal amounts on every side of the spectrum when it comes to social media uh uh sorry just like kind of sidetrack yeah go ahead go ahead um like another thing i feel like that really like fell away with like the the turn away from religion with that sense of like community you know like uh, especially people are noticing especially now the, the importance of um having a community and people that think like you and people to support you yeah yeah for um, sure so i think that was still like a problem before the like the coronavirus lockdown um but it's especially emphasized now i think like with yeah. the like those religious communities like kind of going to shit because mm-hmm. people like have to find something else to belong to like, exactly. whether that's like politics or race or yeah any number of bad things mm-hmm. so uh, i've heard people say like 
you're gonna be a slave to something yeah it's just you choose what it is yeah so well, what's gonna control you yeah okay it might as well be the highest good mm -hmm. you know um I think personally that's really scary just to sit there you you don't really know what you're gonna fill that void with right so I think at the end of the day it may be circling back to what we started our conversation about but that's the whole point is like being able to talk about these things I feel like that is the way to find this sense of community what are you and I going to be connected on outside of religion now well if we didn't have a conversation how the heck are we supposed to know you know yeah. what I'm saying for sure yeah it's all about finding common ground I think yeah and I think that's like one of the main reasons why we want to start the our first episode on free speech mm -hmm. it's like it's so important to like or you can't have a community if you can't talk right exactly if, if somebody says something and you're just like oh you're a horrible person I don't want to talk to you don't say anything mm -hmm. that's something like and specifically, um, us being Canadian, if we're living in a true democracy where free speech is encouraged and openly, like, it is a, a charter or a right and a freedom in our country, then it feels like at any point you cannot be um, putting your words out there to get in the way of somebody else spreading their words, spreading their truth. I think at the end of the day, as humans that one-on-one -on -one conversation that topic we were talking about earlier if you're gonna acknowledge that when you're having a conversation with somebody face-to-face -face, do the same thing when it comes to social media yeah yeah I feel like that's a big thing like with social media and um, like people spending more and more and more of their time on there is that like it turns people into objects mm -hmm. yeah like it's not like you're actually talking to someone you're it's just a name and on a screen. Yeah, that's true. So we really have to like try and get back to like really just loving each other, you know. Fight that dissociation. It's like we're all people. Uh, we may not all look the same, but I mean, we all yeah. went through the same life, more or less. We're more of the same than different. Though. Exactly. Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with like seeing people, like for the who they truly are, not like seeing past the superficial stuff, mm -hmm. like obviously like skin color and stuff like that but also like your ideas opinions and like yeah going past that and seeing people like as humans yeah and it's like yeah. with this hyper realistic society that you guys have been talking about if somebody wanted to argue that just because two people of different races have different skin colors makes them different like that's just not the truth like genetically we are um closer a hundred percent then we are um, different when it comes to everything there is two pigments that change the melanin factors depending on where you live you melanin and fail melanin so it doesn't genetically and scientifically if that's your argument your arguments invalid so yeah yeah sorry just as like a little like disclaimer I feel like we should just kind of acknowledge that like some of these differences are significant yeah but just uh, like we can discuss the differences while remembering that we're mostly the same. I feel like it's the, the important thing. Exactly. That's a good point. Yeah, you have to kind of hold both at yeah. the same time. Yeah. But I think we're kind of too far on. We're too different right now. Exactly. <laughs> so. I agree. Yeah. Well, um, when it comes to, like Kale said, where we're going, uh, future direction, um, the first episode we're leaning towards free speech and censorship. And, like, the world is showing us why this is necessary. From the start of the coronavirus, the lockdown that started in March of 2020, going into all of the injustice and the just hectics that are going down in the United States um, when it comes to Black Lives Matter, when it comes to... Um, radicalizing both sides of the political spectrum fueling the fire all of this is just like it's leading to people feeling like they don't have the ability to speak their truth because this culture of fake news and this culture this cancel culture that people are trying to establish they're trying to silence other people 
um, who disagree with them. And like, it doesn't matter if you disagree, you need to be able to voice that truth. No doubt, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, um, like the cancel culture and, what was that? Oh, mi- misinformation, like mm-hmm. the cancel culture and misinformation, it's kind of like a one-two punch, you know? Exactly. But, like, you're getting hit with all this stuff and you don't know if it's true, mm-hmm. and then so if you kind of, like, take it as truth and you're wrong, then it's it's worse. Exactly, because so you don't really know what to believe anymore. <laughs> What about you, Evan? Do you think, like, right now, spent is uh, censorship and free speech is one of the most important things going on? Yeah, I'd say def- definitely one of the top issues that we're facing. Um, yeah, like, honestly, I feel like Jordan, Jordan Pearson's stance on, on free speech is, like, I think he's got it, re- like, right on that it's, like, really a clash of, like, fundamental values. Okay. So I think that's really, really important that, like, everyone examines like what is actually valuable to them yeah no doubt all right so just some final words i'm just gonna give the microphone to evan all right thank you. yeah i just wanted to say i'm super excited to be doing this hopefully some good will come of it we maybe even help someone um but yeah looking forward to it yeah no doubt me i've got i've got a quote for you guys um it's from my philosophy professor, Joseph Weed. We were talking about, you know, like, people are talking about cultural revolution right now, so we're talking a little bit about that. And he said, it is much more rare for people to prepare for the revolution by making themselves worthy of it. So I think that's kind of what we're trying to do, is make ourselves worthy of a revolution, you know? Sit on that. Boom. <laughs> um, for me... I'm just going to give a recommendation. I know, uh, especially through the first lockdown, it was really, really tough for me uh, sorting out the positivity in the world, being trapped in the cold and not being able to get out of the house. So The Power of Positive Thinking is a book by Norman Vincent Peale that I read this year that uh, it really helped reframe um, the way I perceived the world and the way I reacted to the situations that were coming around to me. And another thing, just to keep your guys' interest, if you're looking for uh, something to watch when it comes to just factual conversations on controversial topics, go check out Steven Crowder on YouTube, uh, the Change My Mind series. I know Kale's watched a lot of it, I've watched a lot of it, I absolutely love it. It's a good way for me to keep my opinions in check with real facts from both sides of the spectrum so yeah we'll talk at you guys next week and i really hope this goes somewhere so catch you later excited let's go let's go (laughs) boom